Creative Content and Mensch Publishing presents Time to Go by Guy Kenaway, read by Alex Jennings and Patience Tomlinson. Chapter 4 The Man by the Lake This wasn't the first time that assisted suicide had arisen with my mum. In the late 1960s, Susie had given Beryl, my grandfather's perky secretary, and girlfriend, a help out of life. She had told me the story many times. Beryl had had cancer. James, my father, was in America. Probably with another woman, Susie said the last time she talked about Beryl. An interesting detail and inevitably correct. He was off being an adulterer, leaving his wife at home to become a murderer. Beryl was in the final agonising tussle with the tumour and going to die anyway, I should point out, and as Susie often said, recently with an edge of envy, things were so different then. You could just do it without anyone asking any questions. Before my dad died in 1968, as I said, at just 40 years old, Susie was quite a different woman. She had not developed into the indomitable Susie I knew in my adulthood. For a start, she was staying at home while her husband swanned around here and there. I couldn't see Stanley being allowed to do that. Despite, and possibly also because, Susie had grown so close to Beryl throughout her illness, at some point she and Dr. Gravesend, well named for this story, decided that Beryl had suffered enough. Susie told me what then happened. The doctor rigged up a morphine drip on a stepladder, and attached it to Beryl's forearm. He then went downstairs and burnt all the drugs packaging on the fire. Nice detail. There were legal issues even then. Susie bid him good night, saw him out, and returned upstairs to say goodbye to Beryl. From the bedside, Susie heard the doorbell ring, and when she answered it, found Beryl's estranged mother standing there in the darkness. She had decided to make an unannounced visit on the spur of the moment to patch things up with her daughter. My mum must immediately have thought of the drip above Beryl's bed with the skull and crossbones on it. I made that last bit up, but there would no doubt have been something about that stepladder that was difficult to explain, because Susie said, I'll just go and freshen her up, rushed upstairs and took the drip out. Beryl opened her eyes and said, I was meeting an old man by the lake. I want to go back. My mum tried to hide the stepladder in the wardrobe, but it wouldn't fit, so she opened the French window and took the ladder out onto the terrace and sneaked it bent double under the sitting-room window that Beryl's mum was quite possibly looking out of. Susie then crawled back to the bedroom, closed the patio doors, and went to get Beryl's mum. Beryl was still alive, but probably not in the best of shape. She saw her mother. I'm not sure if there was a rapprochement. At some point, Beryl's mother left, and Susie plugged the drip back in. So Susie had form, or at least knew the gig, and Beryl went down to meet the old man by the lake.